Believe it or not, it's another VO podcast with three guys who are full-time voice actors at different stages of life, career, and location. But they have formed a bond and work together to hold each other accountable and help each other on their VO path. Three guys from different backgrounds working together, helping each other, and sharing with you along the way. Hey, what are we calling it again? It's It's another another VO podcast. podcast. Okay, okay, guys. Sorry, I get it. Come on. You're not my dad's. And welcome back to It's Another VO Podcast. I'm Troy Holden with Alden Schoenberg, Jake Sanders. We're all three here to talk to you about the wonderful path of VO. And last time we got into a lot about going down rabbit holes with sound, with equipment, with lots of things. We want to take another step back and let's just say somebody just walked up to you and said, hey, you've got a great voice. Have you ever thought about doing voiceover? <laughs> and you're looking at them like you just, you know, a cow looking at a new gate. You guys do know what that look is, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Is that similar to deer in headlights? <laughs> yeah, that's oh, it. Okay, yeah, good deal. That's cow it, at but, a new uh, gate. That's a new one. Yeah. Yeah. Cow looking at a new gate. That happens. But, you know, now you've got all these things going on in your head you figure out what voiceover is and the first thing that comes to mind is boy i'm going to be the voice of a cartoon on disney (laughs) (laughs) chances are you're not (laughs) i think a lot of people feel that way you mean i'm not going to be a disney princess troy yeah they do and i think a lot of people get that in their head that it's that and it's i'm going to be the next (laughs) video game star and yeah that is voiceover but sure You know, we'll tell you as three working voice actors, full-time voice actors, 80% of the stuff we do is very non-glamorous and very non-broadcast. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's You're not going to hear us all the time on radio or TV. Have have some of us been on TV and radio? Yeah, we have. Uh, would you probably recognize our voice if it got played in a room and you knew who we were? Probably not. You probably wouldn't catch it because sometimes we only say four words or six words or three words. You never know. But voiceover can be a, a career. It can be something you can make money at. You're not going to get rich quick. But we're going to throw this from a lot of perspectives of how do I get started? What do I need to know? Where do I go get this information? And, and then how do I even know, even though somebody said, oh, you got a great voice. How do I know that's enough? Well, we'll tell you first off, that's not enough. There's a whole lot more to it than a great voice. Uh, you know, the example I hear all the time is Gilbert Gottfried. He did not have a great voice, <laughs> but he was a, he was an exceptional voice actor. And uh, it, it's just what it is. Now, Alden, did you hear that a lot in your life? You got a great voice. I imagine he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And a lot of you sound so familiar to me. <laughs> yeah. Where have yeah. I heard you? Yeah, yeah exactly. I, 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 I got a lot of that. Um, and. <clears throat> didn't always know what to do with it. You mm-hmm. know, but I mean, I loved to sing, you know, I was a singer for years and years. Oh, I still sing. I'm, you know, once a singer, always a singer, right. A musician type, but, uh, always had that seed in the back of my head that this would be something I would like to try listening to yeah. commercials on the radio. Uh, especially the ones that are, that sound homebrewed, you know, and they, yeah. they're so bad. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. just, I can do that. I, I can, can do, do that. that. Or better. <clears throat> So how, what, where did you go to learn more about voiceover before you even started? How did you dig into that and just share with everybody of here's where I went, here's how I learned what it was and how, you know, how to get started? Well, I'm not sure what it was about my search, uh, background and history that YouTube started recommending some voiceover, you know, coaches and Bill Deweese popped up and I started watching his videos and, and, uh, some of the others that I can't remember their names right away. Um, uh, but. I started watching those videos and I understanding the picture that how this industry has changed over the last several decades and how it shifted from having to go to a studio or have your own $50,000 or $60,000 studio in your, you know, in a wing off of your house to where you can do this from a home studio. And the investment is so much more, uh, uh, available, you know, to get into much, much Mm -hmm. more friendly to get into than it used to be. And it started to come the ideas into my head that, Hey, maybe this is something I could try. 
mm-hmm. I can do it in my spare time. I can keep my full-time job, my my church ministry that I loved doing. I loved my church family, but there's just something in me. I, I'm a jack of all trades. I love trying things. I have too many hobbies, and I didn't want this to just necessarily be another hobby, but if that's all it was, I was okay with that. You know, yeah. I just like trying yeah. new things and having adventures. Yeah. So I started doing, I built a little booth for myself, got a microphone, did some Googling and research and found one that I thought would work well for me. I, I got it and I loved how it sounded. Auditions are for some audio books, started trying to audition for some other thing, pot, did some podcast intros for people. Loved it. I loved it so much. And it, it scratched an itch that I had had of building something, building my own business. Um, and I, I really wanted to seek that out and pursue that. So that's what that's what got me in the game, so to speak. But yeah, it was a little piece at a time watching some of these YouTube videos, go to maybe even some of the free workshops that were available to mm-hmm. understand what the business was about and how to get started, which was space, microphone, script, website, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, I think the the order we'll get into that too a little bit today is is the tools you got to have in the order. Uh, now, Jake, you had an acting background. You had done on camera stuff or, or in auditions. You were familiar with, unfortunately, the the life of try 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 audition audition get shot get shot down. And so some <laughs> of this shot. was probably yeah some of this was probably not as mind numbing, but it's still hard. But what made you decide? All right, enough of that. Let me try this. Yeah, it's funny you say that. Like I've always said that this industry, like voiceover acting, all that stuff. I mean, just I mean, I, voiceover, comma acting, all that industry is basically just rejection without closure over and over again. Because if you know <laughs> you audition for something and you, and you don't get it, you more often than not you don't hear anything. Not feedback. Not no. Not anything. You just don't. You don't hear anything, and then you're just left to wonder. Was Ghosted. It me? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. But to answer your question, yeah. So, I mean, way back in 2010, I was just lucky enough to have a chance encounter with an agent who did, you know, I submitted for movies, television, and the like. And um, uh, when I first started meeting with her, one of the things she suggested was meeting with uh, this gentleman uh, who's based out of Dallas. His name is Bruce Carey. Uh, his company is called Voices Carey. She said, look, he does, he'll do an evaluation for free for voiceover. Um, I, you know, if that's something you want to try, I'll set it up. So I said, yeah, sure. Why not? Right. And I did, man. I was like super captivated. The moment I walked into his area, he has like an office space in Dallas somewhere and he's got a booth, you know, a booth built in there. And uh, I walked in there. He gave me a script and I read it. He gave me feedback. I, I, I followed the direction and he's like, I, I really think you could do well at this. But at the time, I mean, I was 20. And I didn't have any, I mean, like I was, I was a server and I was not saving my money by any means. I was still just like, I'm living life, you know, or whatever. So I didn't pursue it at that time, but it always kind of stuck in the back of my head. Like, man, I'd really like to try that. And then again, I can't remember if I've mentioned this aspect of my voiceover journey on the podcast or not, but my dad decided to try it like almost, I think it was about eight years later, seven, seven or eight years later. And he started telling me things he was learning. And I thought, you know what? I, I could do this. And I did have a job that allowed me to like kind of start investing in things um, um, like a like a to kind of create a booth, a microphone that I'd already invested in for other purposes, like we talked in the last episode. But that's how I got in in into the world. I was like, I could do this from home. Right. I love staying home. I mean, like when I was going to the office, it was awful. I mean, but then obviously COVID changed that, but luckily I kept my job, but this was also, also something I could do working from home. So I, I didn't get a lot of coaching in voiceover. I just kind of like Troy said, I had a background in acting. So I kind of had like an understanding of, of certain things you should do in auditioning or just in your performance in general. So I got, you know, I set up like a basic booth in my apartment, walk-in closet, and then just started submitting and, like I mentioned before, I think it was like two weeks after I started auditioning that I, I started booking. You know, it was small stuff here and there, sometimes a big gig, sometimes, you know, a really big gig or something like that. And and just kind of went from there. Now, I did slowly start to realize that I needed to get some more coaching and I did do a little more here and there. And then uh, later on, I realized I needed to market. But those are things you learn, as you said, step by step of doing it. Like, mm-hmm. If you're completely new and someone comes up to you saying, hey, you got a great voice, you should do voiceover, that does not mean like, you're right, 
and then and buy everything you need to do to start vo- doing voiceover. You need to research and, and see what voiceover is all about. I've had a lot of people, like friends, that come up to me and like, man, I've always wanted to get into voice acting. How do I do it? And I tell them what I did. Like, well, I slowly invested in this. I, I looked at this. I gave them resources they could look up coaches for. They could look up advice about, you know, kind of setting up your own sound space um, and whatnot. And all of them, all of them, silence. It's like, oh, that seems like a lot. I don't want to do that. And like you mentioned too, Troy, this is not a get rich quick job. I mean, there's people that get lucky, but there's people that get lucky in everything, right? Right. So you right. really got to take the step by step and you've got to be willing to take the time to do it. If you don't have, if you don't want to take the time to do it, if you don't like the process, you're not going to like, you're not going to like the gig. You know what I mean? Right. Right. So. You, you've got to be a, a creative person mm-hmm. to do this. You you can't just say you've seen this and you got a voice and blah, 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 blah. And, and that's not to say you had to be an actor. You had oh, yeah. to be a musician or you had to be this or that. I have seen people who were, and this kind of goes into Alden's thing a little, uh, a pastor who, who just very accustomed to being up in front of people and speaking and speaking naturally. And that worked for voiceover. Yep. Uh, people that were uh, in HR and, and they train people or they had to speak in front of people at corporations. Um, you know, there are a lot of different things you could have done in your past that will contribute to making you a really good voice actor. Somebody asked me the other day, why do you see voice actor and voice over? What's the difference? Some people say they're a voice actor. Some people say they do voiceover. Here's my take. There are two words that fix that. The word a and the word does a voice actor does voice over. Period. I like if that. you're not a voice actor, you can't do voice over. You have to act. And it's not simply reading words. There are things on the Internet all the time or on Facebook or wherever, and somebody will come on there and say, all you have to do is sit and read these words and make so many dollars an hour. No, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, you can. You can sit and read words for this, these crappy YouTube channels for 25 <laughs> years and make $5 a script. Sure you can. <laughs> You're not going to make fifty dollars an hour doing that because there's you know they they're two thousand words and you're going to get five bucks and wherever platform's going to take twenty percent now you got four bucks <laughs> good luck it doesn't work that way not sustainable but it's there's so many hats you have to wear as a voice actor and when you're t- when people are talking about how do i start how do i start and we we talked about that some in the last episode but you're going to be everything from a marketing manager to a social media manager to a sound engineer to a uh, invoicing uh, accounting person. Uh, you know, you, you have so many things you have to do because this is a business first. Mm-hmm. There's so many arms to it. So someone that is saying, OK, I think I would like this. You haven't scared me. You talked about I got to do this and I got to do that. But. How do I really know I've got what it takes? There's a couple of things you can do, and there are different good coaches who will give you a free evaluation. Mm -hmm. They will run you through a couple of things and see what you can do. Now, there are also what we call demo meals, schools, some other things that are very legit, but there are also some of those who you're going to pass every evaluation they offer you. Right. And then they're going to ask you for a boatload of money to be in a program for a few weeks, and then they'll make you a demo right after that. Mm-hmm. I will tell you, please don't do that because yeah. I I don't want to see anybody spend a few thousand dollars and come out with a demo, and then they still don't have a setup in their home, and they still can't reproduce what they put on the demo. You know, if somebody's talented, a coach can coach you through a demo and make you sound pretty good. If you're fairly talented, even if you have no experience in voiceover, they can probably somehow get you a demo, but it's going to take a while because it's, they're going to have to run you through read after read after read to get it right. The thing about voiceover is, and this is one of the tests that my dear friend J.J. Wilson will pull on you. He'll say, so you had that demo made. How long did it take? Well, it took about six weeks. Really? Okay. Well, let me ask you this. If I sent you a piece of copy, could you record it, edit it, and get it back to me in three minutes? And they're like, what? Could you record it, edit it, and shoot it right back to me, ready for broadcast in three minutes? I don't know. 
Well, if you can't do that, why do you need a demo? Bang. That's the truth of it right there, folks. You've got to be able to do all this other stuff, and you're not going to be able to do that in six weeks. Yeah, there's a sense of getting the degree before you get the training, Mm -hmm. right? Exactly. And Alden, talk about all the things you had to learn. You were talking about getting in and starting and doing audio books. Talk about the things you had to learn and how painstaking it was to learn that. Well, just just to talk about learning my DAW and learning the editing process. <clears throat> and not just the editing process, but the performance process so that you can come back and edit more efficiently. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I think going on ACX, you hear that recommended as a good starting point for a lot of people getting into voiceover for the first time. And that was maybe more true four years ago when I got started than it is now. Man, I go to look at ACX and I just don't see as many good offerings there as there used to be. But one thing about doing long form narration like a like an audiobook is you have to sink yourself into editing. So once you've performed, once you've done maybe a chapter at a time and you go back and you have to edit that, you have to catch all of your mistakes. You have to edit out mouth noise. You have to, um, you know, find the mistakes and edit them. You learn to snap your fingers when you do a retake, you know, so the microphone, you see this big spike click Mm -hmm. and you have to learn your software. You have to learn how you're doing it. And um, I use Reaper, which I love. I love editing in Reaper. I feel so fast at it compared to when I first started four years ago, especially. Um, But doing that long form narration and you can just do this in practicing, too. You don't have to uh, go audition and pick up an audio book to do. But it, that will light a fire under you. I'll tell you that. <laughs> when you've got a deadline that you've got to achieve. Um, but learning your editing, that is so big. That is such a right. big deal because you're not just the actor. You're the producer. Mm-hmm. And you've got to learn. Alden, let me ask you this. And this has always intrigued me with audiobooks. You're recording an audio book, say, over a period of two weeks, right? Right. And it could be longer. It depends. Or it could be shorter. So every day you come back into the studio to record again, it has to be exactly like it was before because chapter after chapter after chapter, they don't want to hear any difference Mm -hmm. in your tone, in your volume, in your noise. It's got to be identical all the way through. That's not easy. No, that's not easy. Within reason, I would say, because I... I listen to audiobooks as well, and I listen to some of the top audiobook narrators. And you can, if you've got a good ear, you, you can, can hear, hear the difference. Okay, they just started a new session there. <laughs> that yeah. might have been a different day. Yeah. And it's subtle, It's but it's so subtle yeah. because their performance is on. You know, they're performing exactly the way they were yesterday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're not using a new voice or a new tonality or, you know, uh, right. changing the frequency of their narration. Um, so, yeah, that's that's a pretty big deal. You've got to come in the next day and pick up right where you left off and yep. sound like there was no break in the session. Yeah, same, dis- same distance from yep. the mic. Same distance same from the atmosphere. Mic. Oh, man, so, I checked that. I, I put tape down because I stood. <laughs> you mark yourself. <laughs> I put tape down on the floor so I knew exactly where my feet were. Yeah. I wanted funny. to be the exact same distance from the microphone as I was yeah. the day before. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Now, now Jake, you you haven't done an audio book, right? Yeah, and honestly, just never really had an interest in doing audio books. I, I yeah, like the short tough, stuff. <laughs> they're, yeah, tough. they're tough. Yeah, I mean, that, they sound tough, to be honest with you. I mean, so, I like reading, but to myself. <laughs> so as you as you started up, what were the what were the main challenges for you? Was it technical? Was it what 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 were the things you fought? Definitely technical because, like I said, my first booth was in like a walk-in closet in my apartment and I didn't have the right blankets. Uh, The foam I bought was like one inch and it was cheap. Um, And what's crazy is that like at the time I was like, okay, this sounds fine enough. And again, I was booking some work, but I have since, you know, since I moved into my new space and I've since gone back and listened to some of these old auditions from, you know, three years ago. And I... And this is even with processing and stuff like that and editing and whatnot that it's like echoey. And I'm like, how was I booking back then? I know, right, right. right. Um, But uh, yeah, definitely technical. Um, You know, some of these things require just playing around. Right. Like, like, you know, I, the DAW I used back then was WavePad Masters Edition and I, I do like them and I recommend them to someone looking for something on the cheaper side. It's a one-time fee. 
And then I guess you get like a, you know, anytime they have an update, you get a free update, you know, uh, for the first six months, anytime after you update, but the next one you do have to pay for that one. But anyway, that's besides the point. Um, it just took some playing around with the audio and like, just like trying out some normalization, trying out some equalization kind of thing. If you need to, um, again, something you talked about last episode is, you know, when you do start auditioning for these production houses and these agencies, you don't really want to add much at all, if anything at all to your audio, do they just want to hear your raw sound, but on those pay to plays, which is where a lot of us start, um, you, you, you know, they kind of do have this expectation. You're going to edit the stuff for them unless they tell you they don't want it. It's kind of like the reverse, but, um, yeah, just kind of playing around with the with my DAW and and figuring that out. Um, and I still have issues with that because I don't come from that kind of technical background at all. I'm I'm, I'm pretty much the performance side, you know, of everything. Um, mm-hmm. um, you know, I did have to figure out, you know, what was a good way to treat my booth when I got into my new space. So I got on the old YouTube, uh, which is a great resource for so oh, many yeah. different things. Um, yeah. Even even your DAW. Like, I mean, I, I got I decided I was going to get Adobe Adobe Audition this year. And I looked up, uh, you know, what's a good way to equal, you know, what's where should you be equalizing your vocals and and, and all that. And I found a, a video or two that uh, has produced some good results for me. And I've just kind of left my those at my as my presets. And I really don't worry about that anymore. And I have I've had good feedback. So, yeah, it's just I think the issue is, is like you have to want to spend time mm-hmm. researching these things you don't know if you don't want to put right. in the time then that's a clear indicator that you probably just shouldn't be doing right. this in the first place or at, at the right. very least make it a hobby or at the very yeah, most make it a hobby. Don't expect instant results. This, this is like, you know, and, and all to mention Bill DeWeese, that's one of the things he always says, this is not a race. It's a marathon. Mm-hmm. This is not instant. It takes time. Uh, I still have a belief that it takes you three years to, you know, two to three years to get to where you kind of know what you're doing. And then between year three and five, you really can accelerate because now you've gotten all that learning. Well, I won't say all of the learning. You've got all the basic learning out of the way. And year three to five, you're either going to accelerate and take off or you're going to flatten or you're going to burn out. You're going to do one of three things. And that's a small business rule, right? They usually go, you know, a lot of them go out the first year, but it's usually between year three and five where they either make or break. And I think it's the same with this. Now, Alden, Jake mentioned- It's a survival game. Yes. uh, Jake mentioned, I'm still learning, you know, uh, uh, my technical stuff, et cetera, et cetera. At what point now, you've been in this, what, four years or so? Right at four. Right at four. So at what point did you say, okay, I've got my basics. I'm good. I I don't have to worry about that part anymore. I, I don't- I don't know if that's happened yet. <laughs> well, as far as your, I think I, I have all the basics. Yeah, yeah I no, think I, your audio stuff. You know, oh yeah, my like audio, is, sound. my audio is good. I'm really happy with where it is. But at the same time, you still need to go back and revisit and learn new things. They, oh yeah, yeah, yeah Reaper yeah, yeah. is continually updating. Um, they add new things. They're now the scope of Reaper that you need for just voiceover is a very small piece of it. You know, mm-hmm. but <clears throat> there's it's customizable. I can add little shortcuts and keys that help me edit faster. Mm -hmm. Um, I can preload my FX chain, you know, which is very simple, very light touches of EQ, light compression. And then like, like you, the NS1, I've just got a little touch of that uh, in there as well. But yeah, I feel very confident in my, in my editing skills. Um, What I still am working on is being more efficient in auditions, you Mm -hmm. know, because I still get way too, overthinky, you know, right. in my auditions. And, right. um, instead of turning them around in five minutes, you know, I might be more like eight, nine, 10 minutes. And right. so that's, that's, there's always something to keep working on, but yeah, it took some time to really feel comfortable, uh, working with the DAW, working with the editing process. Mm-hmm. I felt very comfortable in my space because I did a lot of research on the front end. So I felt like I built my space and got it where it needed to be very quickly. Uh, quickly right. enough to that in within a month, I was winning auditions for audiobooks, right? Right. So that didn't That's, take very long. But yeah. the actual doing, <laughs> yeah, that took a little I'm, more and time. I'm with you. I, and I'm with you. We're always learning something. I mean, I was looking the other day at I'm very basic, I think, in Adobe Audition. I went to, to Uncle Roy and he did a lot of shortcuts and hotkeys and things for me. He was like, Well, what do you need? And what, 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 how, when you edit, what do you need in there? You know, and, the thing like to put in a half second of 
silence or put in, you know, mm-hmm. to reduce something by two decibels to highlight it and just reduce it down yeah. a little bit where it's yeah. not noticeable. But a lot of times we'll come back in like if we 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 mess up and we're using a clicker like I do, you click and you sit there for a second and then you come back in, you'll get a breath and you'll go a little louder. And sometimes you got to reduce that a couple of decibels. Yeah, you'll yeah. see that spike, you know, in your waveform. There's always, I mean, there's so much to learn. Um, let me kind of flip back to kind of where we started. What are some of the other things you can do if you're interested in VO and in trying to start up? And, and we talked about all the hats you wear and all the things you got to learn. You can go get assessments. Um, yeah. Voiceover.guru, they offer a free 20-minute assessment. I do not feel like they would run you through the meal if you're not capable. I trust them. Uh, mm-hmm. It was where I went. Mm-hmm. I worked with them for over a year. Uh, Linda Bruno, um, great people. I, uh, she and Alyssa are great help. Um, but what you, like I said, what you don't want to do is get into something where it's a school and it's a, a you're, you're headed toward a demo. I'm not saying L- Linda won't take you to a demo, but I bet I bet it'll be a year. It'll be a long time. You're sure, going to go through a lot sure. of coaching before mm-hmm. she goes. Okay, they won't record a demo for you until they feel you're ready to be out yeah. there working. And right, that and, and, is the key. Right. Yep. And you, you so our listeners are work. aware. You're not saying that's a bad thing. That's a good thing. Right. Right. And then the other thing, you know, there are workshops. You'll see a lot of free work, uh, not free workshops, but paid workshops. You'll go to with six other people. Some have more mm-hmm. people in it. Mm-hmm. Those are fantastic because you can figure out what direction is and what how different scripts look and all yep. that. You can also do once you get up and get going, you can do mock auditions. Yeah. We hold some of those yeah. on VO Life. Yeah. I haven't done one in a while, but I am um, I am committing to posting one this week. There you go. Oh, you heard um, it here. So actually, if you're listening to the podcast, you may be a week late. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but we'll, so I'll post another one the week after this podcast. Okay. Right. So at I'm going to make sure we at least get, you know, get these up. And be those are lookout. unlimited. I, it doesn't matter if a hundred people put in, they will all get listened to and I'll get feedback. And the feedback may not be what you want to hear. It may be that you're you right. know, way too much noise. You didn't follow the directions, blah, 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 blah. But you're going to get honest feedback, and then we'll, and you didn't you know, pay two thousand dollars. You paid to nothing. Get that feedback. Yeah, exactly. you paid nothing. Right. It's like I used to say when we showed horses. Uh, it used to be ten dollars to enter a class. I and and when I'd come out, I'd be mad if I didn't you know place in the top three. And my dad would look at me and he'd say, "Son, you paid for a ten dollar opinion, and that's what you got." <laughs> <laughs> so he had so his way. I got a way. question about those uh, mock yeah. auditions, just because I mean, like I on a, I, not I guess not ironically, but some what interestingly enough, I'm pretty sure that's how I kind of. It's how we connected. Yeah, it's how we connected yeah. was through I, 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 both the ones that you had uh, put out. I think you put out one at the in, very end of last year and then one towards the beginning of this year. Yeah. And I think that's I think that's all three of us connected. I, I could be wrong. but um, Yeah, because I literally took a read that I did mm-hmm. and used it for a mock audition and you guys did it. And then I came back right. and combined all three of us. That was right, cool. And played it on my other podcast because I wanted cool. people to hear. Yeah, it was fun to do. It was exciting. Yeah. But my question to you is like, um, you know, I, well, two two questions really. Are when you're listening to these auditions, is it kind of a parent who is newer to the game or maybe a little more inexperienced? And then two, what are some of the things that you heard from these auditions that would either set them apart in a good way or set them apart in a bad way? I'm curious about this too because I bet it's. I bet all it's over interesting. You know, yeah. I've never played the role of it, casting director, and I know that you, me you make it clear that you're not a casting director. But still, yeah. when you do put out an audition, like a mock audition out there, you kind of just step into that role anyway. You, you do. You understand what they're going through, and your your view on auditioning for jobs will change after that because you will realize a couple of things that a if I have no business auditioning for this, I shouldn't because I'm really not a fit for that. Mm-hmm. And you'll hear a lot of people say, no, 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 audition for everything. You need, it's a numbers game. Go after everything. Well, go after everything you're a fit for. You know, I'm not a young millennial. Why should I audition for that? I, I can't. That's not going to work. You know, I can't have that, that teen sounding voice or this voice or that voice. But what, what I ran into with it was immediately I put in there, this, these are the directions, deliver this type of file. Um, I, th- I can't remember on different ones if I asked to slate or not to slate. Um, but 
you know, a, a certain type of file. Here's how you name it. A, if it wasn't named correctly, I immediately put you in a folder that said, you know, wrong file extension or wrong file thing. Mm. If it was um, just, if they did a slate and I didn't want a slate, I put it in a folder that said, you know, slated. Mm. If it, And then I had two other folders, short list and pass. So as I listened to them, I'd just drag them in there, bang, 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 bang. And the first, I used to think, why do they say they only listen to five seconds? Now I know why. Mm -hmm. Because let's say that thing started out um, introducing the new Swiffer mop, whatever. And here's what I would hear. Click, introducing the new Swiffer mop, introducing the new Swiffer mop, introducing the new Swiffer mop, introducing the new Swiffer mop. Oh, short list. Yeah. You know, because it was different. It stood yeah. out. Yeah. I also listened to the sound. So there I had another folder for terrible sound. You mean room sound? Room sound. Okay. Even mm-hmm. I mean, there were some that sounded like they were recorded on a laptop sitting in the kitchen. Wow. They weren't that terrible. The sound was. I, I heard dogs barking. I heard doors closing. I heard all kind of stuff. And this was, believe it or not, there were only about 40 submissions. So... When I got done in the short list, there were only six out of mm. the 40. And then from that six, I narrowed it down to, to two or three. And then I narrowed it down to the one or two because I think we ended up picking a male and a female or something. I yeah, can't remember. Yeah, you, you I think you had three. It. You had like um, best, like it was like a newcomer, professional female, professional male. There you go. There you go. Because we had, we have a, a real big range of people. So what I want to try to do next time is. There. Yeah, what I want to try to do next time is limit it, limit it to people who, of course, didn't win the last one, but have, you know, if you've been in VO for less than a year, I'll put you in this category. If you've been in for over a year, I'll put you in the, the other. Oh, and that yeah. gives everybody a fair shot. Yeah. But the, the like biggest that. thing that I heard, the biggest thing was A, not following direction. B, and you'll hear that on every podcast from casting directors, not following directions, not naming the file correctly slating when they shouldn't slate, whatever, whatever. Some person went on there and gave about a 30 second montage before they even did the audition. Hey man, thanks so much for doing did this. Really? Da, 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 da. I said, no, I know I, I, that's okay, but no, <laughs> you know, I want to hear the audition. I mean, that's so, okay, but that's, I mean, if they, if they were to try that with like an agency audition, oh, which I mean, you, like you would think they wouldn't, but they, they wouldn't give you the time of day. Yeah. Now, now what caught my ear? People who, who did a lead in, that caught my ear. Hey, by the way, did you know, you know, Yeah. that did not turn me off because right. I could hear them easing into it. I knew I was going to ignore their tag or their, or their lead, but it was intriguing to hear how they got to where they got to have a good read. And they're talking reads, about like a springboard technique. Yeah, a springboard. And everyone yeah. that used a springboard, their read, almost all of them, their reads were a lot better. Um, and, and then of course I was listening for difference, but between the not following directions and the terrible sound that immediately just, you know, you're hitting that folder. I don't care what your acting ability was. I can't use you because Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you didn't follow directions, which means probably in a directed session, you're not going to follow directions. Right. That's going to be my take. And if your sound's terrible, I don't care if you're doing it at your place or it's coming through source connect, it's going to be terrible on my end product. And I don't want that. Mm -hmm. So I get it now. Now I get it why casting directors say the things they say. You know, I get it. But anyway, I mean, you guys submit all the time. Do you typically feel like, well, I don't care what it says. I'll just do this. Do you do that? (laughs) No. I mean, like, I, in fact, like, and you know, what's funny is like, you know, when you label something like, you know, it doesn't matter if it's capitalized, it'll come across the same way if you were to search for it. Right. But I've had agents who are like, Follow the directions precisely. Every word that's capitalized in the thing is capitalized in, you know, when you submit the thing, which again, it doesn't necessarily matter. But at the end of the day, I still, I want to look like I can understand directions and follow them. And I'll tell you what bit me early with agents. And, and I learned it was the first submission I did. They said, be sure, you know, because you know, a lot of times in there, it'll say dot MP3. Mm -hmm. Well, I copied the entire naming structure, pasted it. So, of course, it said .mp3.mp3. 
Oh no! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. I didn't know any better. I know. I so did. I'm all right. she all she did was send me an email back. Hey, I know it's your first submission. When you copy that thing, leave off the MP3 part because it puts it in there twice, and then right. I can't find your file. Yeah. Okay. No problem. I learned my lesson because I'm not I'm not computer yeah. file savvy. Yeah. But I learned my lesson. I have also seen them. Some use a dash. Some use an underscore. Mm-hmm. You better get that right. You also better pay attention to where yeah. it says first, last, or if it says first name, last name, if there's a space in between or not. Right. Sometimes there's not. Sometimes there is. Follow the directions. Copy paste is the easy thing to do. Yeah. I mean, some like, of them, and time. Jake and I get stuff from one of the same agents out on mm-hmm. the West Coast, and they always put like sometimes two to four different samples in there. Yeah. You know, and nice. sometimes they're even asking if you're available or not. You know, if you're not available certain dates, you have to put that on the end. And they want to know your if you have a source connection session uh, connection yeah. or or what maybe city your you're city in? city you're in. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you just got to follow directions. And I think um, this came out early as I was learning VO, you know, and going to workshops that I watched people even in a workshop, not take direction and push back. And I thought, what? Are... And I'm one of those people, when people do that, my stomach will drop. And I'm like, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> confrontation. Get... Yeah, I don't like confrontation. Let's not do this. But but I watched one situation get into such a drawn-out confrontation that they stopped the session. Uh, they They muted everybody. They literally got on the phone because they had the person's phone number and called them and said, stop pushing back, stop all of this, or you're not going to come to any more of these workshops. And it did stop the confrontation, but then my understanding, the next week they called them and said, you're never coming back to our workshops again. And this person had talent. They had talent. You know, they, they, could, they could do it, but it was like they got in their head that they weren't going to be told, exa- you know, you're not letting me finish. Let me finish. And then you can tell me if I did it right. No, that's mm. not the way that works. You treat a workshop like it's a client directing you, not a coach. You yeah. Mean you're there to learn. There are divas yeah, and voice actors. Leave your ego at the door. Yeah, absolutely. There are diva but, voiceover actors. Yeah. Surprising, oh my right? gosh. Yeah. Well, and then um, those workshops, you know, space is at a premium. Yep. If you're not going to participate in such a way that you're a learner. Yeah. So you're seeking to get out, then you're taking up a spot from somebody else that can't. Oh, yeah. And yeah, people let, uh, who lead those work, man, there are so many great coaches and great people in voiceover industry that lead those workshops. Yes. They want everybody to get the most out of it. Right. And, and so people, they know when you're pushing back and you're being a diva or whatever it is, they know you're taking the spot from somebody who really could have got something out of this workshop. Mm-hmm. You're a hundred percent right. And, and if anybody thinks they're doing workshops for the money, you're wrong. Right. They're, they're not taking two hours out of their day. And there's, let's say there's six people and they're paying 50 bucks a piece. That's $300. That's 150 an hour. That voice actor could make a whole lot more than 150 right. an hour doing something else. They're trying to share with you. And they're also trying to mentor and they love seeing you be successful. Um, I had another instance, uh, a story was told to me privately, and and I'm not going to say who or where or what, but this is also another great story about not taking direction. This person had a major automotive account, major. It was in the South. Um, They had a lot of dealerships, and they were making a lot of money. This was back when a car spot was probably two grand, 2,500, big money, you know, union job. They came into the job, smarted off a few times, weren't taking direction well. The other voice actor was standing there. The director and the client looked at him and said, do you think you could read this? He said, yes, sir. He said, you, you're fired. You, you're hired. That quick. Guy yep. lost a guy lost a national account over not cooperating and taking direction. And I think if I remember correctly, he made, he made the remark and the writer was there. He said, this is the crappiest written script I've ever seen in my life. I don't know how I'm going to work with this, you know, and you can't do that. I mean, voiceover, even if it's true, you can't, Yeah, you can't, you do your best. And, you know, I've even been in a few things. I've not been in a bad session luckily, but I've been in sessions where I thought, I don't know if I can say this a different way anymore. Oh, I have to, you know, and, 
And I think what a lot of that is, it's just they're trying to satisfy somebody else in the room. They're not really trying to make you look bad or they're not really trying to work you to death. It's just they need to look like they know what they're doing in front of everybody else. And somebody else has got to look like they know what they're doing. None of them are voice actors. Right. So they'll say, well, could you, could you do it with a little more emphasis on this? And your answer is always, sure, whatever you need. Yeah, of course. And it you is. do it again and you do it again. You know, I, I had a, uh, a session where it was a one word session. One word, but I had to say it probably 40 times. And I thought, I, I got no more ways. But you know, the guy swooped in and saved the day. He said, well, if it was you, would you say that word? What word would you use? And then he had me saying all kinds of different words. And I don't even know which one they ended up using. But he kind of saw, you know, this poor guy can't say this any, anymore the same way or different ways. You know, maybe I can, I can save the situation. And there's usually somebody in a session that'll do that, that'll save it. But my gosh, folks, you got to really be, you know, there's more to it than just reading, I guess, is how we started with yeah. this. And that's kind of how me, we're wrapping up. Your story makes me think of uh, Mike Rowe's story about Mazda. He had oh, just, yeah? The one word Mazda. Yeah. yeah. Look, look that up. Look, yeah. look that up, him telling his story about that live Mike session Gross? that lasted an hour. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. And that was Mike Gross? Mike Rowe. Mike, Mike Rowe. Oh, Mike Rowe. Yeah, Mike okay. Rowe. Yeah. I like Mike Rowe. Yeah, like I, I, heard, Mike Rowe's I heard another story, story yeah. that uh, it, this was one where they had to go to the studio and record, and, and there were uh, four or five people there, and and uh, they were going around introducing, and one of them, when they got to the last one, said, hey, uh, I didn't want you anyway. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. So it happens. But hey, voiceover, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of things of getting into it. There's a lot of things when you get into it and we'll get into more, I'm sure. But my gosh, we've spent almost 40 minutes just talking about yeah. should you get in or not. Yeah. Guys, closing, closing statement real quick. What's your, what's your advice? <laughs> what's your couple of sentence advice to somebody that somebody said, hey, you got a great voice. What do you tell them to do? Research. Yeah. Yep. Research. Yeah. It, do the it research, up. learn, learn your space, learn what, and then just go record something. Yeah. Just it's not recording easy. something. It's not as easy as it looks. That's what I'll say. It's yeah, not well, as easy as it looks. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. We know this one got a little long, but there's a lot of good information here and we hope you, uh, we hope you enjoy it and, uh, stick with us. We got more to come. We're only a few episodes in for, uh, Alden Schoenberg and for Jake Sanders. I'm Troy Holden and we'll catch you next time on it's another VO, VO podcast. podcast. You've been listening to It's Another VO Podcast. I'm Alden Schinnerberg. And I'm Jake the Snake. No, you are not. Settle down. All right, all right, all right. I'm Jake Sanders. And I'm Troy Holden. Join us weekly as we spill the beans about our challenges being full-time struggling voice actors. Yeah, and by the way, my girlfriend says you two better get it together because uh, she doesn't want me carrying you two on this podcast saith the voiceover rookie himself but be sure and join us on the next episode because i guarantee it jake will do something worth hearing and what do you mean by that no really what does that mean dude dude let it go it's all right it's all right hey where are you guys going hey don't you kill the feed don't you dare kill the feed hey where, where are you going alden troy what are you are you come back